Hello folks, welcome to our next stage in how to get your animatronic prop to talk. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to have to download a piece of software that we're going to need, which is Track Skull version 2. It used to be under a site called Monkey Basic, I think now it's under Life Ape, but we'll just go ahead and go into our browser, we'll type in Monkey Basic, and we actually see that it's included under Life Ape. So we just click on Home Life Ape, and we'll go to VSA Value Add Software, and there we'll see Monkey Basic Track Skull 2. Click on that, and what we're going to end up doing is purchasing this. And we're actually going to do it under a new license, not as an upgrade, and it will end up running us about $60. So we'll add that to our cart, we'll purchase it, and then we'll download it. Once downloaded, we'll just start up the software. That'll bring us to our interface. And you'll see we have this setup here where we'll make a few changes. We're not going to add auto yet, but first thing we're going to do is not connect it to a camera. That camera would actually be an infrared camera. We're, we're going to do that, but in another separate video. What you want to do right now is connect the joystick. And in my case, it's the Logitech Extreme 3D. We hit OK. We sync with audio, we don't need a percent adjustment, and we don't need filters right now. Head tracking is set to about medium. And then we're going to go to our servo settings. have to play with these just like you did with VSA. I already know what the settings are. I've played with it to find out what the best, but once again the best way to do it is to do it one by one. I'm going to turn off the mouth and I'm going to turn off the rotate and I'm just going to set my nod. But you can see I already have it set here. So if I go to connect, now I'm lifting my skull up. So now I can go ahead and disconnect and set my mouth servo and my mouth servo is zero and I have that set where normal is when it's closed so at 1530 I know it's closed pressed is how far down I want it to go when I press the button and we'll show you that right now let's go back we'll hit click to connect we're connected up and this is how far down I want that servo to go when I press the button. Now let's disconnect it and now I'm going to set my rotate. And I have my rotate set because I've already played with it with my minimum at a thousand which is over here, my maximum 2500 and my default which is right in the middle at 1700. And I put it in reverse because that's the direction I want it to turn when I move this. So let's go ahead and hit OK. So now I have everything set up the way I want it. I have the nod, the rotate, and my mouse. So now I'm going to hit record, but first I'm going to add an audio. And the audio in this case is just going to be what do you do with a drunken sailor? Just the very first part of it. So let me find that. That's this right here. And now I'll press record and I'll use this to animate the skull. Now 
now we have it recorded so we're going to go ahead and export it to a VSA to a VSA setting I'm going to turn this off for a second until the load VSA now if you look when we export you'll see it says output type this is different from what we said earlier this is our setting to send it to VSA and you notice my settings now here are different my settings are going to be what VSA has as its maximum and minimum settings. So I'm going to go ahead and save this to Skull Routines and I'll call it just Skull Routine 1. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and transfer it to that file. And it's telling me export's been saved. To import, I hit F7. And to check my settings, I hit F3. That'll be really important in just a second. Now I'm going to close this out because as long as I have this open, my communication port's actually being used. And I'm going to need that when I go to VSA. So let's go to VSA, turn on. the SSC32. I'm going to go ahead and load the file which I can go to tools settings or I'm sorry I can go to tools import or I can just press F7. And go down to the file I just created and here's my file. Now if you'll notice it's missing the soundtrack, but that's okay. We're going to find out if everything here works first. Now we've transferred all of these events that we created by using this joystick. The only thing now we need to do is we need to go check and we can hit F3 for settings or we can go into tools. Alright, now here we have different default values. We have to go back and reset these so that it's specific for our scope. And since I've saved these, I've saved these in a notebook and they're all right here so I can just do it without having to play with the servos again. So in my case the default for the mouth is 129 with my minimum at 129 and my maximum at 162. I press this and you notice that's my nod, it pops up. But we're not going to have it at this 127 and 254. We're going to set our nod at 81 for the default, 74 for the minimum, and 134 for the max. We'll hit OK. And then we'll go to our rotate. Now you notice it's off center now because we haven't set it yet but we're going to set it now with our default default with our default at 148 our minimum at 74 and our max at 236 and hit okay now we'll hit execute and we'll hit play again and you notice now it's operating correctly. It's mimicking exactly what we had done in Monkey Basics or Trackstone. The only thing we're missing here now is our soundtrack. However, that's easy enough for us to go add. We go into Tools, Load Audio File, or we just hit F2. We click on add. We find the file that we're looking for. Which is Drunken Sailor. We click on that. Now we see it's been added here. We hit OK. And now that adds right underneath here and it should exactly fit what we've done. So let's hit execution play all. See if we're OK now. Turn this up a little bit so you can hear it. Thank you.
This is DR Sailor. So we can add it anytime we want to go back to it. We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and shut that down. Turn this off so we don't put any pressure on our servos. And we're pretty much done. Now that's it for using track skull if you're using a joystick. Next week we're going to show you how to use TrackSkull using a camera so that you can do it with motion capture. I find it doesn't work nearly as well as with the joystick but since it's included we're going to go ahead and try it anyway.